Hi friends and welcome to another fun video. In this tutorial, we are going to create a parametric concrete hollow slab featured on this web page. The parametric part will be the difference between the 200 and 220 thickness determined by yes no parameter and an if statement. Alright, we go ahead and open up a fresh metric generic model family template. I usually go with the generic one because if you're not sure, go with the generic. You can always change the category of the family later if needed. We start by laying out our reference planes. The first one will be the thickness, then the width of our slab. This will be a fixed value at 1200 millimeters. I will later lock this parameter for this value. Next is the reference planes for the center of our voids in the vertical direction and then the center on the horizontal direction. As shown in the picture of the cross section, there will be a total of six voids spread evenly across the width of the slab. Next phase is annotation. We place out the dimension lines on the reference planes and restrain them. I will later connect these dimension lines to parameters. Now we move on to the parameters and here is where it gets interesting. So first let's create a length parameter, which I will place in the dimension category. I place it here because this will be a user defined parameter, meaning the end user can change the length of the family. The rest of the parameters here will be placed in the other category, since these parameters will be working in the background of the family and not be changeable. Or they are fixed parameters like the width. One more user-defined parameter is the fire-resistant yes-no parameter. So when this is turned on, the hollow slab will get an increased thickness of 20 mm, making it fire-resisting. Before I set up the formulas for this particular fire-resistance increased thickness, let's uh, connect the dimension lines to the parameters. I do this by marking a dimension line. We go to the top menu under Label and find the correct parameter in the drop-down menu. Do this with all the dimension lines except the distance from the top where I will type in a fixed distance and lock it. Alright, all done. Gonna open up the family types dialog box again and type in numerical values in some of the parameters so it matches the information about the hollow slab from the website. I type in numerical values in the formula cell. This will lock the numbers making it unchangeable when loading the family into the Revit main project. So the X thickness parameter will contain the if statement and I will return to it later. So back in the, um, in the front view, let's uh, clean up our view a little, reorganize the dimension lines and changing the scale. So it will be easier to read our numbers in the dimension lines before we will continue. So now I'm going to place out the geometry. I will be using the extrusion tool and lock it to the reference planes. Meaning when I change the numerical values which are connected to the dimension lines which again control the reference planes where our geometry is locked to, the geometry will change in size making our family parametric. We do some uh, flexing. It is recommended to do regular flexing of the model when creating a family. Now over to the really fun part, if statement. Let's explain the if statement. So an if statement is like making a choice based on a condition. If the condition is met, true, one action happens. If the condition isn't met, false, a different action happens. So imagine you're deciding whatever to go out to play or stay at home. You might say to yourself, if it's sunny outside, then I'll go out to play. Otherwise, I'll stay at home. In programming, an if statement works similarly. It's like giving instructions to a computer. You say, if something is true, then do one thing. Otherwise, do something else. In the example here, I'm typing out right now the condition here marked with red is thickness, which is a parameter with a value, is bigger than 350. That is the condition. If that is true, the return value will be thickness. 
marked in pink. If the condition is false, return value is 200 marked in orange. So, in our case, the condition is the yes-no parameter, par uh, resistance. If that is turned on, then the if statement is true. If it is turned off, then it is false. The true value here is thickness plus 20 millimeters, and the false value is thickness. I hope that was somehow understandable. Uh, let's uh, test it out. Uh, we'll turn off the fire resistance parameter, and as you can see, the x thickness changes value between 200 and 220, dependent on the yes no parameter is checked on or off. But the last piece of this family is the void. This void cannot be a nested family. Somehow a bit sad, but yeah, so we need to draw them up in the same family as the concrete uh, hollow slab. I'll be using once again the extrusion tool and place them in the reference crossing point. I will add a diameter annotation and connect it to the diameter uh, parameter and just copy the, this object to the rest of the crossing points. Ah, uh, forgot to add the length dimension line in a plan view. Let's quickly add that and align both the concrete slab and the void to the reference planes so it will be easy to adjust the length in the main Revit project. This will go pretty quickly. All right, just finishing up here and all done. We're gonna take a look at it in the 3D view. We open up a 3D view and yeah, it looks correct so far. And we're gonna do a little flexing. We open up the family types box and change the length value to 1200. And yeah, it seems to extend there. And then we're gonna turn off the fire resistance, the thickness reduced and increased, correct. Seems to be working just perfectly. We mark the object and associate the object with the material parameter before we load it into the Revit main project for further flexing. Here we're gonna assign a concrete material to our hollow slab and then we're gonna continue the flexing. Let's open up a plan view. Okay, so one action I would like this hollow slab to perform is to be able to drag it using the handles. So I need to go back to the family and change the length parameter from type to instance. So when I mark it now, you see the small handles at the top and at the end of our concrete hollow slab. I will be able to drag it up and down just like I wanted. I am all finished. And that is one beautiful concrete hollow slab parametric switching between the 200 thickness and the 220 fire resistance thickness. And that concludes this tutorial. Be sure to like and subscribe for more extremely fun videos. Thank you for watching.